Midland Bowl. And indeed, tonight's meeting is sponsored by Motorquip, the car parts dealers. And it is going to be a meeting for the Midland Drivers' Championship. Cars out on the track for heat number one, and straight through six race formula here tonight. Standard three heats, consolation, final, and grand national. Cars out for heat one. We have 2 to 8 in view there on the yellow tops. Fred Skinner from Redditch. 459, Chris Paxford with him behind with the famous number. 391, John Goodall. And outside him, number 97, Murray Harrison. Those are the four yellows out on the track for heat one. Phil Wilson and Stu Smith, 139, were both listed, but they're not out for the first race. 422, Nigel Wharton lines up in the reds. Superbly turned out Linton Carr. And 422, Wharton, always a man to fear here at Brandon. Certainly goes well on his local track based at Shenston near Litchfield in Staffordshire. Down to the two superstars, we have on the outside Bert Finnegan, number 55, from Leek in Staffordshire. And on the inside of him, the auctionman, number 33, Peter Folding from Rotherham. Those are the two superstar drivers at the back of the red, separated from the star drivers. And starter Brian Beat starts sending the cars round on the rolling lap here. Eight cars qualify for the grand final. The remaining cars, those that can finish, will have to go through to the consolation race. Unlimited class of racing, anything you can get in that will do the job applies in Formula One. Basically using Chevrolet 454 engines, one or two Buicks, some smaller Chevrolets, and indeed I do believe there's one or two drivers even got Chrysler's, and of course Dave Miller with the Ford engine in his car. He's coming up later on in the program. No, indeed, he just lined up in heat one amongst the Reds. The other Reds, by the way, Mike Shirley, 395, one man to watch out for, upgraded to red from blue. Long-term blue top, now up to star grade, though, here tonight. As ever, Coventry staging usually the first meeting in the month, which means that the new gradings do apply here at Brandon, but uh, two drivers who weren't able to upgrade during the last grading period are the uh, two white tops at the front. 419, Mick Stecco, from Nottingham on the inside of 410 on the outside of him, Paul Lowe. And Paul from Glen Parva, beautifully named place in Leicestershire. So it's those two white tops who will lead them off. We have got some other whites as well. We've also got 161 Kevlo, also 279 Alan Long, and number 66, who we believe is called Mike Horton. So there we see it. 66 with a very pronounced wing as the green flag drops. And it is 410. 419, rather, who makes the break. Mick Stecco looking for the cars coming down into the turn. But Stecco getting well clear there as the White Tops have their problems, obviously, in the early stages of the race. Trying to get out of the way before the Yellows can put the bumper in. 419 is away, Mike Stecco. The finger goes out from start to Brian Beat. Second place is Chris Paxford, 459. Looks like third place is going to his fellow Yellow Top. Uh, that could well be John Goodall in third place. Peter Foley already coming through. Kevin Lowe at the back, 161, with that rounded roof. And number 66, as so those two white tops already dropped. Paxford in second place in 4.59. It is Goodall's in third. Then behind him, Des Chandler. Ian Higgins staying in blue for this month, dropping down a little. Dave Meller coming through forcefully in 3.04. And three white tops now drift to the back, including Paul Lowe as well, number 4.10. Mike Stecco leads 4.19. The only white top to survive the early problems. Don't know where Alan Long's got to in 2.79. Stecco down into the turn in 419. There's a threat of rain around here tonight. The shale circuit showing up well though here in the opening race, but uh, when the rain comes down it could cause problems. Drivers have to change their tyres over. There goes Stecco then. That's the gap down to second place. Chris Maxford. Third place Andy Webb. Des Chandler spun out. John Goodall is third. Fourth is Graham Blundell. Going out wide there, Bert Finnegan as Murray Harrison reverses the cross. Coming through there, 136, Dave Taylor, Fred Skinner now looking for the leader again. Des Chandler back in the race, and there he is, Mike Stecco, going past Kevin Lowe in 161, lapping the white top 161 car with the red body. So that blue car there, 419, Mick Stecco who leads. So Stecco driving a very uh, considerate race in the early stages. Taking the uh, fellow white top back markers carefully as he tries to put plenty of space between himself and Paxford. And Paxford coming under pressure now, and indeed we have a new second place man, it is Andy Webb in 247. Brother cars coming through, there goes Finnegan, Meller, Shirley. Falling behind him, 33, so Finnegan has got the drop on his fellow superstar. So there goes Stecco, 419. 
Looking down for second, it's that blue top car, 247. Harrison still reversing around the track. Paxford's third, Goodall's fourth. And Murray Harrison, who's developed a fair reputation here at Brandon and a couple of other places, as uh, putting the spectacle into stock car racing, has already been uh, reversing around the track twice here tonight. John Goodall missing that turn. They're going straight into the stanchion, supporting the safety fence. Bud able to get back into the race. Goodall from Stony Stony Stanton, which I would imagine is in Northamptonshire. 247 Andy Webb coming up strongly. Andy, a former Formula 2 world champion back in the 60s. And Stecco's pulled off with a busted wheel. So Stecco parks up on the infield as Andy Webb takes command at the halfway stage of the 16 lap race. Andy Webb, 247 leads. Looking down into second, it looks to him, it might be Paxford, 459. So Andy Webb. It's going to be a difficult man to dislodge from first place. Paxford getting a lot of punishment from the third place man. It looks like Nigel Wharton, and indeed it is. But coming through is Graham Blundell. Ian Higgins with him. Wharton's edged down a few places. Mellor's right in his tail, plus Bert Finnegan, Mike Shirley and Peter Folding. Group of reds all together there. Wharton on the outside line. Looks a loser there as Mellor comes through. Past Higgins. Higgins having a rough ride being pushed into Blundell. As Wharton comes around the outside, but he finds the fence. So does 66. He's taken Blundell with him. Three cars all into the fence there. So Nigel Walker's chances of victory disappearing there, along with Graham Blundell, Dave 136, Dave Taylor, coming up a few places there. But it's Andy Webb who leads, number 247. And Andy from Daventry, local man, just down the road. So Webb first, looking for that second place, man. It looks like it's Mick Nope just going past. You could see the gap he had to make up. There's the car parked up in the fence. Looks good, but not quite so good hanging up on the fence. 247, Andy Webb is out in front. Second place now, Dave Mellor, 304. Third is Higgins. Fourth, Finnegan. That's going to be a tight one between them. Fifth, Paxford. And just behind Paxford, it looks like Mike Shirley, 395. Three laps to go now in heat one here at Brandon. Andy Webb looking set for victory. Webb, one of those uh, well-experienced drivers. One well, of that pack of blue tops. He used to include the likes of uh, Mick Noden, but of course Mick up to star grade now and holding down that position. Webb going around the abandoned Kev low car, looks set for victory. I don't think Mellor's going to get on terms. Because Webb has got something like 40, 50 yards lead over the second place man. I think he'll find last lap coming up. Mellor has got that gap to make up. You can see Webb going down this the turn. Mellor's still got a long, long way to go. There you see him just coming into picture, gradually closing in. Webb closing in though now on Murray Harrison. He's got to watch out for that bag marker. Just glides through on the inside. Harrison passive there as 247 Webb comes through. Harrison trying to get him back as he comes out, but Mellor's closing in. Too late for Mellor. 247, Andy Webb wins. Webb first then. Dave Mellor second in 304. Looks like Bert Finnegan slipped through into third place. So a fascinating race one there with uh, Andy Webb coming home for victory in the blue top car. Bad luck to Nigel Wharton, though, got caught in that shunt that saw the white top 66 go into the fence. Followed by Graham Blunt, but Wharton on the outside line could not avoid the wreckage. Some fine action there, certainly with those red tops battling for the lower positions. In the end, though, it was Mellor who broke free from the other reds. Wharton, pull, you could see, pulled up on the infield. Mellor broke through for that second place, but it was a good win for 247 Andy Webb. In heat one here tonight at Coventry, so Webb qualifies for the final. Dave Mellor gets the second place. That's one of the best performances by Dave in front of our cameras for a while now. It's a long time since we've seen that 304 car win here on Screen Sport. But Andy Webb, no stranger to that. I think that's about the third or fourth time we've seen Andy win here on cable television. Andy Webb wins heat number one in fine style. The former Formula 2 world champion straight through to the final in first place. Looks like he's got a, looks like he's a fan of Spider-Man, judging by that bonnet coming up. But uh, 247 then wins heat one here at Coventry well the rain has eased off and as you can see a lovely shot there of that rainbow over Brandon I think there's a pot of gold somewhere on the M6 at the present time well we have the cars coming out now for heat two we had a brief spell of rain between heats one and two and now uh, vehicles are lined up that's one man to watch for Charles Pickering 214 he will lead them off He's known as a bit of a wrecking merchant because, I, if my memory serves me right, he was the only white top in the world final last year, booked in as a spectacle merchant, uh, and indeed obliged with uh, quite a few spin-outs and uh, I think even the occasional rollover. Very much a spectacle man to watch. 162 on the outside of him, Richard Pratt. Yes, we got your first name right this time. He was registered in the uh, driver's list as John Pratt, so everyone's been calling him John all year, but his name is Richard. 244 behind, it's Mick Rogers. Make a late addition to the programme here tonight. wasn't originally listed. We, in fact, uh, 
have the standard commentary arrangement of only two white tops named for a race, but in fact we had, uh, what, five turning out for heat one, and we've got a similar number now. Looking at the Reds, 3.28, Keith Riley. On the outside of him, a man to watch for here tonight, Mick Noden, 3.06, local driver. 36, Rod Falling, father of Peter, coming out for heat two now. Those are the red tops, and at the back, we have 2 on 2 Frankie Wayman. He's got the shale car back together again, out tonight here at Brandon, after having to use the tarmac car on shale circuits for a while. Yes, several of these drivers do have two cars, at the very least. In the case of Wayman, I, you lose count sometimes. But uh, they have spare cars. They have one car for, obviously, set up for the hard surfaces of tarmac, and another car for the softer shale tracks. And indeed, Wayman out in his specialist car here tonight for shale. Another view of that rainbow over the beautiful lamps here at Coventry. When they come on, it turns night literally into day. So the rainbow stands vigil over Brandon Stadium as uh, a late entrant arrives on the track for heat number two. And indeed, that late car is 329 Stu Young. Came out earlier, but retired to the pits with some mechanical problems. Coming out late now to join the field of cars for heat number one, and he's going to have to take his place up at the front pretty fast. 279 Alan Long just getting towed off the track. And so Stu goes past. 51 Mo Smith, 8 Gary Castell, 74 Neil Picorni back up to blue now. Was white at one stage this year. 104 Warren Jackson, 73 Rob Cowley in the blues. Lovely chance now to go through the entire field. Yellow tops, we have 225 Steve Ferris, 485. Uh, 485 Terry Jackson minus the wing tonight. Uh, don't know what's happened to the car. Obviously some damage sometime. We also have 347 Andy Shaw and 327 Howard Davis and 46 Ray Bird. Young going past them all to join the white tops at the front. In case you haven't seen stock car racing before, all of these roof colours are according to points scored. You get your top 20 are reds, next 30 are blues, and the bottom 50 in the top 100 are yellows. The remainder of cars are white apart from the champions, of course, who are included in that top 20 in gold and silver. So the car's moving around now on this rolling lap prior to the start of heat two. Looks like they've, or indeed they're just about lining up at the present time with the late edition of 329. Interesting to see number eight there, Gary Castell, nephew of uh, heat one winner Andy Shaw, Andy Webb rather, 247, 347, both Andys, it doesn't half confuse you. Gary Castell going past the camera then. 51 Mo Smith from Avely in Essex, one of the few southeastern drivers left in Brisker. Smith, very much a formidable opponent here at Brandon. 306, Mick Noden, local man from rugby, blue during most of the time we've been covering Formula One, but in recent months has indeed upgraded to red and uh, developed quite a liking for the crew raceway, picking up heat wins and final wins without any real problems up there at Earl Street. 328, Keith Riley knows his way around crew as well, a former banger driver up there in Cheshire. Yellow tops of you. There is uh, the aforementioned Andy Shaw, 347. Howard Davis from Cheltenham, 327. Yes, you get the southwestern drivers coming up here, or the West Country drivers, southwestern brisker terms, such as Davis, Paxford, and so on, and the Scrivens. 212, Frankie Wayman just almost hidden there by Keith Riley's wing. Wayman through to the World Championship this year. National points champion and looking well on his way to victory again this year. 200 points clear of his nearest challenger in this year's championship. Well, the, the gate now across the pit's entrance is being knitted into place. Quite a little piece of mini engineering in its own right, getting uh, things set up to block up the pit's entrance. As you see, they even do it as an oblique angle a bit further down, as well as extra protection, just in case anyone gets through the main bit. Well, the crowd have got the umbrellas out here tonight. The uh, supporters on the popular side having to make do on the turn there. They get a good view from there, though. They're diehards. There is cover around for them, but uh, when you want the right view, it doesn't matter if it is raining. Lovely green umbrella there. I could do with that before one or two of the cameramen at times. Looks like he's uh, going to be fishing later on. Brisker, sport of mixed appeal. Family sport. Not quite the profile of uh, people that a lot of people would expect. People outside sports like this in Speedway tend to think everyone was wearing leather jackets, but as you can see, it's a long way from that. Fans getting to their feet now as the cars set off on that rolling lap now for Heat 2. Yes, they're finally on their way. 370, Jeff Keeling, one of the white tops there in the March Bodies team car. Stu Young lining up at the back of the whites. Looks like he needs assistance now from Howard Davis. Young was in the pits earlier on. Well, the sunshine now after the rain, casting a beautiful light over Brandon. 
gleaming in the summer sunshine now. Certainly we've had some unseasonal weather. A fair amount of rain in the past. There we see the Wayman car. As you can see, quite distinctive from the uh, tarmac version. It's got the uh, air intake on the top of the bonnet, and also the upswept wheel arches. Of course, the problem with the sunshine is you do get dark. You, you do get uh, shadows under the shadow of the main stand. So leading them off, it's going to be Pickering and Pratt. 214 and 162. Pratt on the outside, building up the speed as the green flag is shown by Brian Beaton. The race is underway. And Pickering leads them off in 214. Charles Pickering from Liversidge in West Yorkshire. Already coming through Mick Rogers, 244. Jeff Keeling left someone in 370. Shaw leads off the yellow tops. Jackson going wider. He's got two cars pushing him out. And Pacorny and 104. Warren Jackson both finding their way into the fence early on. Well, Neil Pacorny, winner of the £1,000 prize at Bradford not so long ago. Hitting problems there, though. Mick Rogers it is who leads them off. Pickering edge back into third place now. Rogers 244. Leads second, Stu Young 329. Third is 214, Charles Pickering. Well, Terry Jackson catching the inside of the track there and spinning out. He's not had the best of luck in recent months. Tended to uh, fail to finish more races than he started. And uh, Jackson tearing up the centre green. Frankie Wayman hitting problems, though, in the 212 car. And he's found a tyre on the inside line. So he's losing places all the time. Looks like he might have a flat tyre on the outside rear. 244 Rogers then leads. Snaky little going down the back straight, down into the turn, going down into the shadow of that bend, just clipping that yellow top car as he comes round there. Courtney now almost a lap down on the race leader, Mick Rogers. So Rogers first, second is Young, third is Pickering, three white tops still out there, fourth is Pratt. So still the four white tops have yet to be broken. Rogers into the top turn. Wayman still having problems there. You see the wheel is completely off the rim. There's no chance for Wayman here. He's going to have to come out in the uh, consolation race. Also, the Baylor stock car driver's flat tyres. Rogers with something like 30 yard lead over the second place car. Steady drive. Pickering now indeed is second. Looks like he's forsaken his uh, rough and tumble stuff for some cool driving here tonight. Third place, 329 is Ju Young. So it's those three white tops and a fair gap down to the rest of the field. And Pratt is getting edged out by Gary Castell, number eight, the first of the higher graded cars to come into the picture. Mo Smith, 51, also showing up well. And Smith looking for the back bump of Howard Davis to get him out of the way. And problems there, 329, Young going wide, getting edged out there. And the field comes through, out goes Andy Shaw, 347, spun out in front of 244, Mick Rogers, the race leader. Getting plenty of action here in the opening races here at Brandon. Second place, Charles Pickering, 214. Long way down to third place now, halfway flag goes out. Indeed, looking down into third place now behind Pickering. It looks like it's Mick Noden, Gary Castell fourth, then comes Shaw, Brad, Smith, 329, Young, Rob Cowley up there, 73, 327 behind him. Young going wide again. Rob Cowley, a Grand National winner at Bellevue in the World Championship semi final meeting. It was a good night for the middlemen because it was Rob Pierce that got the heat in the final. Cowley picks up the Grand National. Union Jack flag still out, showing the halfway stage off heat two. Young having a rough ride of it though. Through goes Howard Davis at 3.27. It's 2.44. Mick Rogers leading. Going down in front of the starter there. 2.44. Mick Rogers out in first place. Down in second. Still out there. It's uh, Charles Pickering. Third place, Gary Castell. Fourth now is Mick Noden in 3.06. He'll be sure to make a late burst. Got to watch out for eight and 3.06 now. Castell and Noden. These are the first two, though, coming off the turn. You can see Castell with a huge number in the background, just like Andy Shaw's, Andy Webb's car. Fourth place, 3.06, Mick Noden. Behind him, it's Mo Smith, number 51. Then we have Andy Shaw, Rob Cowley, 73. Then Richard Pratt, 162. Howard Davis, Stu Young, Rod Falding. Then we have Keith Riley, Jeff Keeling. And the upper corner, a fair way behind that batch of cars. And indeed, there is the leader coming up on them, 244. Mick Rogers. He took this Midland Drivers' Championship. Looks like we're going to get a couple of white tops qualifying for this one in the form of Rogers and Pickering, although Castell is closing it all the time. Rogers leads. Rogers first, second Pickering. There's Castell and Noden. 
back in third and fourth place. Terry Jackson's pulled out to 485. So Rogers does have a good lead over the second place man, 214. Pickering in turn is coming under heavy pressure now from Gary Castell. So we watch it now. There goes the race leader. Second place, Bosmas coming through. In fact, he's, front of, he's in front of Castell. Looks like Noden's been dropped slightly. Castell spinning out. Noden's caught him. Just flips him round as he was already out there. So Gary Castell hitting problems, reversing back into the Terry Jackson car. Trying to get back into the race. So Gary Castell losing a lot of places there. Coming into the closing stages. Rogers first. Mo Smith second. Mick Noden third. Charles Pickering fourth. Rob Cowley is fifth. There's problems all over the place. Stu Young, Gary Castell, Keith Riley providing the blockage there on that turn. Rod Folding going through in 36, just clipping Richard Pratt, and indeed Riley just reversing back to try and get out of the way in 328. Bo Smith now leads. Smith has taken advantage to jump through in the first place in front of Mick Rogers in 244. And 244 taken out there by the other top. Mick Noden goes around the outside, takes up second place. A little further problems there. Stu Young. A victim of the earlier pileup along with Mick Rogers and Andy Shaw. Let's check the flag. Mo Smith wins in 51. Second place goes to Mick Noden, 306. Third place goes to Charles Pickering, fourth Rob Cowley, 73. Looks like fifth might have been Jeff Keenan. He could have been a lap down though. Mo Smith picks up the win then, scavenging for the win after the after the guys out in front hit problems. Mo Smith was on the hand though to take advantage. A cool drive there. Steady nerves, got out of the way of the trouble, straight through in the first place, number 51, Mo Smith. So the Avely driver qualifies for the final, followed home by Mick Noden in 3.06. Charles Pickering, though, getting a third place. Obviously, there's more to Charles Pickering's driving than just the occasional wild moments and a bit of spectacle. Charles Pickering qualifying for the final in third place. That's a good amount of points for him. So 51, Mo Smith it is who wins, and Mick Noden, 3.06, finished second in the red top car. Brian Beat returns to check and flag to the podium. It's a win and a clear one at that for Mo Smith. So the Avely Essex-based driver romps home for a good win there. But number 306 McNerdon just couldn't catch him at the end. All those problems though for those leading white tops and yet Charles Pickering stayed in to get third. McNerdon second and he qualifies comfortably for the final. Well, let's look at the result now of heat one in this motor quip. Midland Drivers Championship. First place, 247, Andy Webb. Second place, 304, McNoden. Third, Bert Finnegan. Fourth, fourth was Ian Higgins, number 29. Fifth, 395, Mike Shirley getting a good place there in his unfamiliar red top. Sixth place, 459, Chris Paxford. Seventh was Dave Taylor. Eighth, Des Chandler, despite a spin out earlier on. And just missing out on qualification, 391, John Goodall. And tenth, 156, Graham Blundell. That's your top ten then in heat one of the Midland Drivers Championship here tonight at Coventry. Well, Andy, that was a good heat one, wasn't it? Yeah, super. You make sure you get the right profile on the face like it. <laughs> yeah, just getting it right there. What what are your memories of that one? Well, I thought that uh, the first five laps went pretty well. Uh, cleared everybody out of the way and just stuck the inside. I saw Dave and uh, Bird at the end of the race, but I thought I got plenty of time, really. So pretty just, well clear, weren't you? Yeah. It was... Uh, no, it's easy first heat. <laughs> yes, looking forward to the final. But, uh, of course, you've got a few years behind you now. How long have you been racing Formula 1s? Because I know you had uh, Formula 2 history beforehand. Well, Formula 1s, I started racing uh, 71. I won't tell you when I started racing Formula 2s, because that would give me age away a lot, you know. But uh, you were world champion once, weren't you? That's right, Formula yeah. Two. So yeah. how long ago was that? Uh, back in 67. 60. So uh, you've known your way around a fair bit. Yeah, we're talking about racing, are we? Yes. <laughs> yeah, we'll stick to the racing for the time. Yeah. Yeah. Gary Castell, he's your nephew, isn't he? That's right, yeah. He was, he was going well in that one, wasn't he? Yes, yeah, so the pair of you up for the final. Yeah, uh, no, Gary didn't finish in that race. He, he didn't got, finish. Oh, yeah, he was going well. He got dumped end. out, yeah. didn't he, later yeah. on? Yeah. So, uh, who are you looking for in the final? Well, Stuart's got to be the man. I always look for him, but uh, if he gets by me, he gives me a good lead. So. <laughs> Best of luck for the final. Thanks yeah. very much. Thanks very much. Ta-da. Results now of Heat 2 in this Midland Drivers' Championship, sponsored by Motorquip. First place, Mo Smith, 51. Second, Mick Noden. Third was Charles Pickering. Fourth, 73, Rob Cowley. Fifth, Jeff Keeling, 370. Sixth, Rod Folding, 36. Seventh was uh, Richard Pratt, 162. Make sure we don't call him John. Eighth place, 46, Ray Bird. Just missing out on qualification place, though. In ninth was 74, Neil Picorni. And tenth, 225. And that was Steve Ferris. So that's Mo Smith down to Ray Bird qualifying for the final. We now move on to the third heat. Cars coming out through the pit entrance. 492 there, Kev Burns, spectacular driver. One to watch for, based at High Wycombe. Behind him, 248, Graham Atkinson. And behind Graham, we have number 11, David Squire. 
long cab on that car. 322, the highly mounted there in the seat. Malcolm Nietzsche, quite a bit off the ground compared to uh, number 11's driver. Behind him, 412, Dave Tapping, a Mike Close car, new wheels for Tapping, and up to blue for the current grading period. 430, Mick Crocker behind him, a former white top. Moving down the line, looking at that one, that's Les Spencer, number 98, crashed out the World Championship in the Bellevue Semi. 203, Dan Clark, back down to blue for the current grading period. He's alternated between red and blue at the present time. 107, Pete Bashford, don't let the side of the wing fool you, he's a blue top. 452, Joe Jopling in the marquee car. Staying red for this current month. Behind him, we have number two, Willie Harrison. Veteran driver coming out here tonight. 471, Bobby Burns. One of uh, Bobby's local tracks, based at Ilford in Essex. 50 or other, 175. Behind him, Rob Pierce. He's got the car nicely turned. That looks very much like a Finnegan machine in the terms of the paintwork. 53, John Lund moving on to the superstars. 260, Dave Beresford. Then it looks like we've got a, a white top coming up behind him. And that is number 49, and 49 is Dave Field. At the back of them all, the world champion, number one, Stuart Smith. Yes, we've got the gold top here tonight. So those are the cars coming out for heat number three of tonight's Motorquip sponsored Midland Drivers Championship. And the cars settling themselves down on the track prior to the rolling lap. Well, Brian Beats ready to send them off. The white top's heading off. 117, Rob Scriven's leading them off. Just putting some calming words there to the front of the yellows. 49, Dave Field there. Having problems with the engine, it's uh, missing. You might be able to hear it on the soundtrack. A lot of uh, blue smoke being poured out the exhaust at that point. It certainly doesn't sound too healthy. Looking at the reds, Willie Harrison, former world champion, veteran driver, number two. Rob Pierce there in the newly painted 175 car, up from blue. As I mentioned earlier, Heat and final win at Bellevue recently, so he's certainly coming into form. 53, John Lund, one of the top drivers in the points table. 260, Dave Beresford, likewise. And at the back of them all, Stuart Smith, number one. This should be an interesting one with Smith, Beresford and Lund all out in this one. Well, Stuart, still looking for that sponsor. At least he's got sponsor correctly spelled on the wing now. You can see that the E's been crossed out and an O substituted. Smith and the car, they have dubbed the Golden Wonder this year, facing his usual target. In other words, the rest of the cars in front. Those are the two cars at the front then. 117, Rob Scriven on the outside of him, 383, Dave Johnson. But Scriven made the break there. Green flag was showing, so uh, he's away, Rob Scriven, 117. Second place, Dave Johnson. Problems galore there down the home straight. Dave Field making an attempt to remove Brian Beat from the starters rostrum. Or so it seemed there. And Stuart Smith heading onto the infield. Caught the back of Beresford's car. Out in front there, 117, Rob Scriven. Second place, 383, Dave Johnson. Completing the first lap. 49's car still stranded across the home straight. Malcolm Nietzsche taking a trip into the ropes. Look at that yellow drop. It was there. Difficult to read the number there as he went past. Looked like it could have been Kevin Burns. Probably not actually looking down the list. Leading them off then, Rob 117 Rob Scriven, another one of those West Country drivers from Siren Sister in Gloucestershire. Squire there, Pete Bash are not far behind. The tyres are rolling now as Beresford goes through, jumping behind him. That's going to be a bit of a target for the drones to avoid. Will Fawns there, complete with men at work sign and just missing it there, the race leader, Rob Scriven. Avoided the tyre superbly. So there's Dave Field's car on the home straight. You can see the chicane that now forms the entry to the turn. Dave Tapping coming up strongly in 4 2 There's Bashford, 107. 98 Spencer, 2 Harrison, 175 Pierce. He's got Stu Smith right up with him. Jopling's already been dropped. Mick Crocker, Malcolm Nietzsche. Bobby Burns the fair way down. Always got to watch out for Burns, though. Physical driver, which makes it strange that he, rode, he raced hot rods recently, the non-contact formula. 117, Scriven first. Second is Dan Clark in 203. So Clark taking advantage of the uh, blue graded position to come through strongly here. Third place, a fellow blue top, Smith. Fair way down the order, still a bit of work to do. He's got uh, Rob Pierce still in his sights in front of him. And now Dan Clark is through into first place. Looking for third, it looks like Dave Tapping in 4-1-2. And indeed, the white top, Rob Scriven's having problems there, getting edged out now. Malcolm Nietzsche still parked up on the turn in 3.22, trying to reverse out of trouble. Looking for the 
race leaders to go through. There he goes, Dan Clark. It is Dave Tapping in second place. Third place, it is Rob Scriven in 117. Yellow top, the next target for Dan Clark to come past. 383, Dave Johnson spun out. Looks like he's got Mount Beach and William. Yes, he caught the 322 car, it looks like. Crocker there, 430. So successful in the opening couple of months of the season. Got a fair amount of ground there to make up here in Heat 3. Behind him, oh indeed, he's almost got a lap to make up. Dan Clark leading the race at the halfway stage, number 203. Les Spence has lost his back wheel there. Still on the car, but the tyre's gone. Spencer trying to get back in the race. I don't think he's found out about the tyre yet. Dan Clark just edging Crocker out of the way. Crocker sneaking around the turn, then through goes Clark. Just checked where Crocker was going, then powered through. Dan Clark from Rothwell, near Kettering in Northamptonshire leads. Second place, 412, Dave Tapping. Third place is Rob Scriven in 117. So Clark alternating between red and blue in, in the successive months currently. Second place there, 412, Dave Tapping. Third place, Rob Scriven. Fourth place, Pete Bashford, 107. Then we have Rob Pierce, David Squire, John Lund, Stu Smith dropped back a bit on Pierce. Behind him, Willie Harrison, number two. Well, behind Harrison, we have a yellow top car there. Looks like Kev Burns. Behind him, Bobby Burns. And behind Bobby Burns, Joe Jopling. So 471 and 452 have been dropped by the superstar drivers here. There they go through. There's Dave Beresford. He's a fair way back as well. Almost about to be lapped by Dan Clark. So it looks like we might have Beresford in the consolation. Clark leading in 203. Nicely turned out car. And successful one here in Heat 3 is the way things are going. Still got a fair way between him and second place man. And three lap mark are now coming out. It is Clark who leads, looking set for a win here. 203 first then. Second is 412 Dave Tapping. So we've got Blue Tops first and second. There goes Pierce, Lund behind him, and Stu Smith. They're trying to work their way through getting to that top eight. Looks like they're not far off. Two laps to go now. So there's Dan Clark. See if we can follow them down into the turn. There goes Clark. Second place man is Dave Tapping, 412. It's a long, long way down to third. Looks like Rob Pierce is in fourth. So it looks like Pierce and Smith are both on the way to the final, but it's going to be a win for Dan Clark. 4-1-2, Dave Tapping in second. And as I say, a long way down the third, and it is 1-7-5, Rob Pierce. Fourth, Rob Scriven. Lund is coming through. Behind him, Smith. They look set for a place in the final. Crocker's a lap down. Harrison just might just shade it into eighth place. But the checkered flag is out. For the man coming in for the race win. It's not Beresford, it's Dan Clark in 2-0-3. So Dan Clark wins. In the 203 machine, Dave Tapping getting a good second place in his new car, number 412. We've got the top talent through there, with the exception of Dave Beresford, who uh, was very sluggish in that one. Dan Clark, the winner in number 203, coming round now on his lap of honour, prior to picking up the check and flag. Second place was number 412, Dave Tapping. And not far behind Rob Pierce, 175, Stu Smith and John Lund also up there. Looks like Willie Harrison had the sixth place at the time of the check and flag. Dave Tapping trying his best, but he couldn't get on terms with his fellow Blue Top. A good drive by Clark. But Tapping holding out the uh, talent of Pierce, Lund and Smith there for a good second place. But no catching the winner. Number 203 by a convincing margin at the end. The winner of Heat 3 of the Motorquip Midland Drivers Championship, Dan Clark. Well, Dan, where's New Smyrna Speedway then? In Florida. You've been on the trip, have you? Yeah, a long time ago. I can't afford it now. Yes, well, he had a good win there in Heat 3. Yeah, it makes a change. About the first race, I'm finished for a long, long time. Yes, you're yo-yoing between red and blue currently, aren't you? That's it, yeah. Up and down and up and down. Yes. Should have a three-inch thick roof soon. Yes, that's true. You're just putting the paint on top. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look for a sponsor with some thinners, will you? Yeah. That's great. <laughs> so, uh, how did you view that one? From the front, obviously. Well, it seemed quite easy to me. I don't know whether it was or not. I don't know, I don't know what happened to all the reds and superstars that nobody seemed to be near me i don't know why we were almost a half a lap behind you had a fair lead over the second place man dave yeah. tapping did you did see it, much of him no i could hardly see anything out my mirror so i just i was looking forward rather than backwards 
Yeah, it's pretty comfortable stuff. Any yeah. anxious moments? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Looking forward to the final then. Yeah, yeah let's see if I can finish it for a change. Yes, of course, uh, being down to blue, though, when you lose your status, you have, of course, got that bit of extra distance though. Oh, yeah, one or two yeah. Guys. It is a, a big advantage, actually. Depends really what the... Uh, what the other reds, uh, other blues and yellows are going to do in front of you, that's the problem. Yeah, a lot of people have said that you're too darn close to the yellows when you're in blue. Yeah, yeah, knowing the yellows, you know, half of them are out of control anyway, so... <laughs> I see. Well, we've, we'll be showing this to the yellows later, so we'll get a yeah. good finish to the final, Thank eh? Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if, if we see it, see it's six cars onto one in the final, we that, know what's yeah, going on. Yeah, you know what's it, yeah. <laughs> okay, Dan, best of luck. Thanks okay. very much. Thank you very much. Well, a fair amount of damage sustained to the fence there during that melee at the start of Heat 3. Bit of work to be done there, putting in a couple of braces. Well, in the meantime, let's take a look at the result of Heat 3. First, the man you just saw, Dan Clark, number 203. Second, 412, Dave Tapping. Third place, Rob Pierce, 175. Fourth, John Lund. Fifth, number one, Stuart Smith. Sixth place, White Top Driver, 117, Rob Scriven. Led for quite a while, but uh, stayed in the top eight for a place in the final. Seventh was David Squire. A quiet but uh, confident uh, seventh place there through to the final. Eighth place indeed was Bobby Burns. Ninth just missing out Joe Jopling. So that race between Burns and Jopling was a, was a vital one. Tenth place was uh, Dave Beresford. So Dan Clark almost lapped up to tenth place there. And uh, Willie Harrison indeed was a lap down, not as I initially thought. So that's it. The top eight from that one go through to the final. That's Dan Clark down to Bobby Burns. Well, Graham, just to show we've spotted the sticker there, yes, we can see it on the front. There's a sign on the windscreen of Graham's Atkinson's car there showing a cable car. Yes, Graham's one of our viewers. Hope you're enjoying things tonight. And tell me this is the week when you're not watching. OK, Mick Rogers leads them off along with Mick Stecco, 419. And indeed, the flag goes down. And which one's going to make the break? Stu Young's right behind them, 329. And it is 244, Mick Rogers. Stecco goes straight out to the fence. That's another one for our uh, promo sequence with a few sparks flying there. So we're saving that one for later use. 422, Nigel Wharton leading off the reds. At the back, it's Peter Folding, number 33. Beres was just slipped in front of him. Joe Jopling, 452, just in front of him. At the front, Mick Rogers, 244, 329. Stu Young going through into first place. Stu, another man that's uh, realised how much attention you get with a screen sport sticker on the car, and a bit of it's still in place. Last time we saw him, though, it was. Behind him, though, a yellow top is going to give him even more attention. Andy Shaw. And puts in the bumper well, Young having to hold on to the car to try and keep on to that first place. John Goodall third, the video is coming through, still Pete Bashford coming up with the blues. Dave Beresford behind Wade and now Jopling. Crock has been dropped, Stecco and also 327 Howard Davis. Well there indeed is Davis at the back of that pack, Mick Crocker in the middle of them, looking now for the leader coming down the home straight. Andy Shaw first, second Stu Young. John Goodall in fourth, looking for that third place car. Looks like it could be Jeff Nichols, 215. Not too sure, he hasn't appeared before today. And Graham's out the car. Graham Atkinson pulling out of the race there. 485, Terry Jackson hitting more problems. He spun out in his first race, failed to finish. 225, Steve Ferris, not only getting off the track, but also finding a barrel. Of course, it's not that easy to see down the front there when they're getting off the line. So it's yellow top leading now. Does it like to want five nickels? This must be a small wooden peak. It's their first appearance of the night. I don't think he's been out at all in the previous races. You see as he comes down the home straight. Well, indeed, he's given the signal by the starter. Back in second place. Well, oh, difficult to see from that shot. Still plenty of cars parked up on the infield and uh, cars pulled off there onto the centre green. So there goes the first place car. It's 91 in fact, Wolf Warns. So well, from the distance, it doesn't look like Nichols' car, obviously the red. Wolf Warns from Sheffield, indeed, the race leader, number 91. So apologies there to Wolf. Back to ID. 2 1 2, Frankie Wayman going around the outside of some of these cars now. Looking for a gap past Les Spencer here. With only six places up for grabs, it's going to get hectic in the closing stages. Paul Lowe out of the car and getting well past the check ropes there on the inside. Hit the fence. 452 Joplin going past. The car heading for the infield there. And it is number 225, Steve Ferris. So Steve parks up on the infield now. 492 Kev Burns just in the way now. Frankie Wayman in number 212. Behind him, Les Spencer. A couple of red tops as well, including Peter Folding. And uh, 
Smalling's still got a fair bit of work to do. He's got Mick Crocker right in front of him, having to edge him out of the way. It looks like Wharton, though, might be able to do that. 4.22, yes, indeed it is. Right, so Wharton past Crocker. Coming up strongly now in the 4.22 car. Certainly a good field of reds in this one. And it looks like a few of them are going to be eliminated here because they're not making too much of a challenge. Pete Bashford just behind Wharton now. There's Wayman in 2-1-2. Coming up into the frame, he's probably just about in there. The halfway flag coming out. Oh, and there, Joe Jopling clouds the fence. Graham Blundell just in front of him on the inside of Blundell. It's number 98, Les Spencer. Mick Rogers' car parked up in the fence. And there goes the leader. Will Warns has got Warden right in his tail now. 422 looking for the lead. He's edge Warns out. Beautiful piece of stock car driving. And through he goes. Harrison still in there though in 97. Les Spencer's found his way into the fence. The umbrellas are out again as the rain begins to fall once more. 107, Pete Bashford looks like he's on route to the final. Deep Ashton in second place. I'm not too sure about Harrison. I don't think he's third. I think he might be a lap down. But it's Bashford against Morton now for first and second. Somewhat of a surprise to see Bashford having to go for the consolation to get through to the final. Certainly well accomplished driver. Another one of those southeastern drivers doesn't race too often. When he does so, the most effective, as you can see, a yellow top earlier on in the year, but now firmly established as a blue. Looks like Neil Picorni being lapped there by 4.22, Nigel Wharton, the red car. The race leader coming down in front of Brian Beat. And there goes the finger. Nigel Wharton leads 4.22 in the consolation race. Picorni is a lap down in 74. Second place is Pete Bashford. Third now is Frankie Wayman in 2.12. So it's 4.22 from 107. 2.12, third. Picorni putting the bumper in, trying to get back in the race because he, he's uh, no longer a lap down now on Wharton past the race leader, trying to get back through the field, looking for a place in the top six. Wayman up there in 2-1-2 in third place. He's got Fred Skinner right behind him in 2 -28. There's Keith Riley, Dave Barris with Peter Folding. They're looking a long way behind those uh, top cars. Looks like they might not be going through to the final. And indeed, there is the race leader, Nigel Watson. So a lot of work to do for those guys. Second place, Pete Bashford, 107. Third place, Frankie Wayman. Should be interesting now in this race for second and third. I feel though that Wharton has got sufficient of a lead to get through here for a win in the uh, consolation race. So Wharton comfortably clear in number 422. He leads off this consolation race. The last Gals qualifier for the final of the Midland Drivers Championship, backed by Motorquip here tonight. Frankie Wayman. Now, coming through strongly now into second place. Pete Bashford is third. There indeed goes Wharton. Something like 20, 30 yard lead over the second place car, Frankie Wayman. Going into the closing stages of this consolation race now. So this is it. The uh, moment of truth as the drivers have to get into the top six. Scramble now for the final. Nigel Wharton going into the final lap. Frankie Wayman second, 2 1 2. Third place, Pete Bashford. Looks like. Coming up there, well, I think those two are, are, are a lap down. It looks like a long way back to fourth. Indeed, we could see some of those top drivers. We look a good way down, actually finishing in the top six. First place goes to Wharton, 422. Second to 212, Frankie Wayman. Third place to 107, Pete Bashford. That's the way it finishes. Not too sure about those cars that I see behind. It looks like Jopling or Crocker may have got in there. And maybe even now the Keith Riley, Dave Beresford and Peter Folding. But it looks like it was a pretty close thing for those guys to get into the top six. The window for 422. Nigel Watson in the consolation race. And so that's it. We already have 24 cars through to the final. The final six to make up that 30 car field will come from that consolation race result. We'll give you that result as soon as we have it. 4.22 Nigel Wharton wins the consolation race here at Brandon. Well, Frankie, I see you've still got, in fact, the tarmac car. I was calling it the shale car, but it's the tarmac car you're still using, isn't it? Yeah, it's just struggling a little bit. Yes, what, what are the problems? You, you're obviously uh, down to one car at the present time. Yeah, we should be back with other car next week for Long Eaton. What are the problems? Well, uh, to explain to a non-technician, we're talking about the shale cars, the tarmac cars. What's, what is the difference when you actually come to racing with a tarmac car on the shale track? And basically, there's not that much difference here. It's just a case of setting the balance up different. and The tarmac car has a lot more inside weight than the shale car. Well, you got a second place there in the Constellation. What was it early on? It was a flat tyre that put you out, wasn't it? Yeah, flat tyre on first lap. Don't know why. I think somebody must have clipped valve on it. 
So uh, second place in the consolation. You couldn't quite catch Nigel, could you? No, second place gets you into final. It's a bit of a mad scramble here in the consolation, isn't it? With six places up for grabs rather than eight. I don't like consolations. You just you've got to qualify. That's the intention. And the pressure's on you there, isn't it? Yeah, it is. So now we're looking forward to the final. Quite a few drivers there. Mind you, Mr. Barris had just got himself eliminated in seventh place in the consolation, so that's one less. I don't think so. Do you think it's been amended? I think uh, Bez was in, actually. Yes, they gave it a seventh, but uh, there must be a, must be an amendment coming in. I think there were two cars in there a lap down. I see, so we'll be seeing uh, what comes up from the stewards. Yeah. So, uh, who are you looking for in the final? Obviously, Mr. Smith is one to watch here, but uh, you must be having high hopes. Mr. Smith, Mr. Clark tonight, I think. Yes. How long is it since you had a, a final win here? Uh, middle of last year. Middle of last year. I was just trying to remember that. Well, best of luck, Frankie. Thanks very much. Thank you. Results now, the consolation race, first place, 4.22, Nigel Wharton, second place, 2.12, Frankie Wayman. Third place went to 107, Pete Bashford. Fourth, 98, Les Spencer. Fifth place, Joe Jopling. Sixth and final qualifier out of that batch, number 91, Wilf Warns. Seventh place, Dave Beresford, just missing out in the cut. Eighth place, 33, Peter Folding. Ninth was 74, Neil Picorni. And tenth was 2.28, Fred Skinner. But with the cars out on the track, the gate is done up. Brian Beat taking a look at the vehicles, wondering whether to send them off yet. Waiting for the running lap to get started now in this grand final here tonight. Up for grabs, that Motorquip trophy for the Midland Drivers' Champion. Motorquip, the uh, well-known suppliers of car parts for trade and for the individual. Rob Scriven will lead the white tops off. Indeed, it looks like we've got one or two white tops coming out here. And indeed, the gate hasn't been done up. It's just being done up now. And indeed, of course, they do have the two gates here with uh, one-way traffic flow system. The entry gate is done up, but the exit gate is just being put into place. So we wait for the final to get underway here at Coventry. A 20-lap race, four laps more than normal. And it'll be interesting to see who can go for a double. Remind you of those heat winners so far. Blue top 247, Andy Webb. 51, blue top, Mo Smith. Blue top 203. And that was Dan Clark. The only red top winner so far, 422, Nigel Wharton, in the consolation race. So three blue top drivers going for a double here tonight. With a good field of reds there out to try and get some... Good points for the star and superstar drivers here. Mike Shirley lining up on the front row of the Reds on the outside. Former blue top up to red. Other Reds in there, Nigel Wharton, who won the consolation race. It should be interesting as the race gets underway with those top-class drivers jostling for position. You can see a section of the crowd there, certainly a good crowd here at Brandon tonight. Waiting now with near bated breath for the Midland Drivers' Championship final to get underway. Well, the cars are gradually moving, as uh, they gradually set off, rather, for the final lovely sky over Brandon Stadium. It's been a, a blustery evening. We've had touches of rain, but it's now thankfully dry. We had a rainbow earlier. Certainly, it makes a fine shot there. Driven once more to the excellent lighting here at Brandon, as much as anything else and the excellent lighting provided from above. So, Pete Bashford moves off in 107. Brian Beat just signaling the cars to continue, going up onto his rostrum now, waiting for the indication that the cars are okay. Brian doesn't tend to send them around extra times here at Coventry, certainly in what we've seen. They seem to be pretty well disciplined when they go around on their rolling laps here at Brandon two champions together, Stu, and, Stu Smith and uh, Frank Wayman. At the other end of the scale, Richard Pratt in 162 and 117, Rob Scriven at the uh, front of the field, the two white tops. Richard Pratt qualifying in seventh place in heat one, and Rob Scriven qualifying in heat three in sixth place. Well, indeed, Frankie Wayman's comment after the consolation that he thought Dave Beresford was a couple of places up. In fact, 
the stewards don't go along with him. Uh, the lap score is rather because there's no place in Beresford in this final, which is now underway. The green flag drops and the most quick grand final starts here at Coventry. 20 laps in this Brandon circuit. Away goes 162, Richard Pratt. 46, Ray Burton leading yellow top, leading blue top, Ian Higgins. Leading uh, red top, Dave Meller, 304. And it's tight going into that turn. Joe Jopling's been dropped to the back in 452. Coming away down the home straight. It's Richard Pratt who leads 162. Second place, Rob Scriven, 117. Third, Charles Pickering, 214. Andy Webb has lost a lap early on, 247 wide on that turn. Pickering third, coming under heavy pressure in fourth place. And the crash on the bend, 73, Rob Cowley spins out into the melee. Goes Dave Tatney with fire coming from the exhaust of the car, along with 107, Pete Bashford. Some problems there for those three drivers missing out now. Wayman chasing Smith, number one. Behind them, Keith Riley and Joe Jopling, and Smith spun out. Well, 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 Stuart Smith spun out on the pit turn. And indeed, getting out of the car, I don't think he's going to try and get back in. He's looking around the the machine just to try and see whether it's worthwhile trying to restart but it's like on the Grand National Handicap now. No, it looks like he's got a flat tire. Oh, and he's been clouted. Good job he wasn't trying to get out of the car at the time. Of course, Stuart with his experience will know when to get out of the car and when not to. Indeed, looks more safe moment now out against. So looking now for that first place. Looks like the yellow top David Squire has now snatched it. Dan Clark coming through strongly, 203, but he's got a load of red tops on his tail. There goes Rob Pierce, Mike Shirley, Bobby Burns, Frankie Wayman, Keith Riley, John Lund. Looks like Des Chandler at the front of that pack, and Bert Finnegan just edging the white to power the way. That looks like Jeff Keeling, 370. So it's the gold top car, Stuart Smith's number one machine that stands on the inside of that turn. It's going to be uh, anxiously watching to hope that it doesn't get too much damage. Rob Scriven there with Mo Smith, number 51, waiting for Brian Beach signal now for the leader, and it goes out to Mo Smith. What could it be Pickering? I don't think Pickering's lost the man. Smith putting the bumper in on the 214 driver. Certainly one of that pack is being judged first at the present time. Spin out there, beautiful. Uh, 720 degree spin for number 46 Ray Bird. He's got a collapse front wheel now. David Squire going into the back of him, number 11. Oh, plenty of trouble there on that straight. Dave Mello looked like got him. a few problems there. Mike Shirley slipping through in 3.95. Mo Smith, 51, confirmed as race leader. Burns attacking those Frank Marcus there. 51, Mo Smith, it is who leads then. Second place. Looks like Rob Scriven, Dan Clark, third. Looks like Frankie Wayman's prediction of Dan Clark finishing strongly is going to come through. But Mo Smith, this man, he's got a catch. Mo already with a heat win under his belt. And indeed, a fine performer around this Coventry circuit. A former Formula 2 driver just clipping Stuart Smith's car as he goes around the turn. So we're seeing a former Formula 2 driver down on the old Southern Brisker circuit. Now they're chasing things far afield in Brisker's world, which only extends as far south in Formula 1's now as Northampton. Even that's a fair run up from Avely. Which, if you don't know, is down by the Dartford Tunnel, down on the south side of Essex, just outside Great Ormond. Wayman strongly. Driver out the car onto the dock track, getting well out of the way. Looks like Ray Bird indeed it is, number 46. Well, referring to Frankie Wayman, of course, it is the tarmac car he's still using on Shale, and not the Shale car as I mentioned earlier. There we see the car. Trying to get past Dave Meller. Got the two cars mixed up, trying to remember the difference between them. Definitely the tarmac car there. Both Smith leads in 51. Second place, Dan Clark, 203. Third place, Nigel Watson, Rob Scriven, fourth, fifth. It looks like Rob Pierce in 175. So the Midland and Southern Talent rising to it. Here tonight at Coventry. Mo Smith leads. Dan Clark second, Nigel Watson now third. Rob Pierce up there as well. Rob Scriven having problems. Rod Farley coming through. Frankie Wayman also there in 212. Dave Meller splitting him away and... Uh, and folding also up there, Mike Shirley in 395. Shirley adapting to a red top roof pretty well here tonight. Wayman behind Mellor, still got a bit of work to do to get through. Just putting the 
bumper in there on Mike Shirley. Rob Scriven going past Jeff Keeling, one of the back markers. Some more sparks there coming from Shirley, who drives into the back of the Dave Tapping car and shoves it further down the track. Shirley trying to get back in the race, and indeed he does. And indeed, Mo Smith not far behind him now. Mick Crocker, a lap down. The leader is just behind those cars. There he is, Mo Smith, 51. You see David Squire, Joe Joplin, Chris Paxford. All pulled up on the infield, along with Andy Webb, an early race victim. Well, Mo Smith looking good here. He was a good way ahead of Mick Lurden in his heat, and they're uh, looking comfortable here as well. But Dan Clark is within sight of him, second place, number 203. Plenty of dust building up now. Dan Clark second, it's Wharton third, fourth is Rob Pierce. Fair way down to Dave Meller in fifth, sixth is Wayman, seventh Rob Scriven, still holding up there in the race order, looking set for some points, and Mo Smith about to lap that car in front of him, looks like Rod Folding, number 36, two laps to go now in this grand final, indeed it is Rod Folding, Mo Smith looking good for a heat and final win here, I wonder if he'll go all the way for the treble, not often you see a blue top doing that, I can assure you, so Mo Smith, me down this the turn. Just over one lap to go now for the Avery driver. Looking well set for a win here in the grand final. I don't think Clark is going to catch it somehow. Indeed, it's Wharton that's taking up the challenge now. And it is more realistic. It's going to be close stuff now. Wharton has got free of Clark in second place. And Wharton putting the bumper in. Can he get past? Yes, he's done it. Beautiful piece of driving by Nigel Wharton. Edges Smith out into the fence. It's a win for Nigel Wharton in 422. Second place goes to goes to Mo Smith in 51. Rob Pierce wasn't far behind, nor was Dan Clark. Dave Mello there. And where was Wayman? Looks like he drops a fair way back at the end. But Finnegan going past the flag, 55. It's a win for 422. Nigel Watson, some classic stock car driving there, pushing Mo Smith out in the final turn. It looked like Smith's race, but then Wharton finally found the speed in the last couple of laps to get past Dan Clark. And then there it was going into the final turn, Mo Smith within target range. In went the Wharton bumper, and Wharton picks up a final win to go with this consolation win. That's his second win of the night. But as I say, the first win came through the consolation rather than the heat, so the treble isn't on for Nigel Wharton. But he'll be delighted with a win here tonight. The track record holder here at Brandon wins the Motorquip Midland Drivers' Championship here tonight. Nigel Wharton, number 422. So obvious delight there down on the Greyhound track as uh, Nigel Wharton is presented with the Motorquip Midland Drivers' Championship trophy. Looks like we've got quite a bevy of uh, Motorquip girls down there. And uh, it's going to be an interesting drive round. Looks like uh, Michael Addison down there as well. Looks like he's arranged the uh, sponsorship here tonight. And obviously a, a couple of words about Motorquip at this stage because uh, their slogan is always one word for parts, something for everyone. And uh, they will look after parts for cooling, braking, electrical, exhaust, clutch, ignition, steering or suspension systems. And you'll find a Motorquip shop locally. So they're sponsors of tonight's racing here tonight at Brandon. And we hope they've enjoyed their night's entertainment here tonight. They were talking about having 100 reps here tonight to view the proceedings. So Nigel Wharton prepares for the most pleasant night of his life, I'm sure. Well, barring quite a few, but uh, certainly a, a pleasant duty of the evening to go around in the car with uh, how many most quick girls? Well, it's certainly more than I think I could handle. Let's take a look at the result now of that uh, grand final for the Motorquip Midland Drivers' Championship. First place, 422, Nigel Wharton. Second place, 51, Mo Smith. Third, Dan Clark. Fourth, Rob Pierce. Fifth, Frankie Wayman. Sixth place, 304, Dave Meller. Seventh, John Lund. Eighth, Rob Scriven. Ninth, Bert Finnegan. Tenth, was 471, Bobby Burns. But the winner, Nigel Wharton. Well, there has been a touch of controversy before the cars have come out for this Grand National race. We unfortunately couldn't bring it to you. It was in the darker corners of the pits. But across the main access from the pits area, through the speedway pits onto the track, there is a series of gates. Now, those gates were barred to Nigel Wharton, John Lund, Keith Riley, Wilf Warns, and a couple of other cars. Wharton, as final winner, was demanding to come out, but he was told, no, we've got enough cars out there, you can't. At that point, he knocked the gate down. John Lund was deterred from it when somebody sat in the gate. So it's difficult to make any decision either way. You put 
looking at it from one point of view, the promoter's point of view, he doesn't want to keep his people hanging around for drivers who are taking time in the pits. And from the other point of view, drivers may say that they had to have a bit of time after the final to get their cars ready. Either way, it's very, very difficult to judge who's right and who's wrong in that situation. But uh, Wharton's out, Lund is not. Frankie Wayman got out in time. There is a car limit, a number of cars limit on the uh, raceway here at Coventry. You can't have more than I think it is 30. So that's another factor apart from time. But the flag drops now on the Grand National Championship qualifying round here tonight. Nigel Wharton on a one-lap handicap leads him off as final winner. But the first place man is in fact Mick Stecco who gets dumped onto the centre green. 485 Terry Jackson also hits the infield. Getting back into the race, David Squire going out wide, Nick Node and Rob Pierce are out. And the tyre placed carefully in front of them to protect them, you might say. Just one of those little accidents. 322 Nigel on Alton Nietzsche going through that loss. And uh, 419 or 410, it looks like it could be Paul Low. Number 410 hitting problems there. Mike Shirley, Frankie Wayman in view there. Now comes Nigel Wharton, so he's already made up ground on the back of the red tops. There's the race leader, Rob Scriven. Second is Malcolm Nietzsche, 322. And 104, Warren Jackson having to head for the infield. Nietzsche second, then third place is Andy Shaw. Fourth is uh, Fred Skinner as Jackson parks up. And Nietzsche just catching the back of Scriven's car. Looks like he was lifted up by the tyre that was outside those two cars parked up on the turn. Noden parked up on the outside and indeed out of the car and getting away from the scene of the accident. Rod Folding, Bert Finnick and Bobby Burns, Dave Barris all coming off that turn. There is Walt This is the All Comers race, the Grand National. This is Nietzsche who now leads. Second place, Rob Scriven in 117. Well, Malcolm Nietzsche's had a fairly quiet evening of it, failed to make the final. Indeed, didn't get in the top 10 places in any of his races. But uh, leading now in the Grand National Championship round. Coming off the turn. Second place, Rob Scriven, 117. Third place, Andy Shaw, 347. Fred Skinner, 228. Then comes Dan Clark, 203. The outside wheel spinning viciously there. Number two, Willie Harrison, 247. Andy Webb, 55. Finnegan. Then we have Burns, Wayneman, Beresford, Blundell, Chandler, and Wharton's up there. Well, Shirley goes out to uh, Folding's car both trying to get back into the race. White top, car parked up there, Dave Johnson's vehicle parked up on the turn there, that's going to cause a problem for them. Melee of cars going down into that bend, Rod Farling's parked up on the infield. Still Malcolm Nietzsche leading, a former blue top, staying at yellow though for the second consecutive month. And Wharton hitting problems there, was making good progress up through the field, but just managed to catch the Mick Noden car there on the bend. Not the best of nights for Noden, the second place in his first race. Nothing since. So now Nietzsche holding on to that first place, going past the back markers. We know in front of Brian Beat, another tyre spinning across the track. Nietzsche goes through in 3.22. Nietzsche first, looking for second. Well, surely it's not Warson, he must be a lap down. That would make Rob Scriven second, Dan Clark third, I think you'll find. So can Clark make up the distance? Clark already with a heat win and a third in the final. Got to look for him for a chance here. Bo Smith, I don't think he's come out for this one. Dan Clark now past Scriven. Now the chat, now the uh, race is on. Not too far behind, looks like Bert Finnick and Willie Harrison. They're up in the placings at the present time. There is Frankie Wayman, 2-1-2. Two, two. Wayman leaving a bit of smoke there, going into the turn. Andy Webb just spinning out in front of him. Dan Clark's got Bert Finnegan right behind him, but having Rob Scriven just behind him in turn. There's Webb having spun out the tyre, parked up on the inside of the turn. Andy, or rather Mount Nietzsche going wide. It's the halfway, st halfway stage rather, of this Grand National Championship. Nietzsche having Warson just behind him. Looks like Rob Scriven's pulled up on the home straight, and Deeney has number 117. Scriven just trying to get away from the tyre. So, Deeney, there's Dan Clark second, and uh, the leaderboard confirms that Mo Smith is out there. Haven't seen too much of him, but he is, in fact, in third place. So, there we have it. 
Malcolm Mitchell first. Second place. Well, surely we're going to Bert Finnegan. Indeed, it's Finnegan showing up. They're not 51, it's 55. Finnegan second, third place. Then we'll be going to Dan Clark. Finnegan having disposed of the Kettering driver. Another time to spread out the track. There's Finnegan in second, Clark in third place. Fourth is Harrison, fifth Wayman. Sixth place, it is Bobby Burns. Seventh, Dave Beresford, eighth. Looks like 2 to 8, Fred Skinner. Then we have Graham Blundell, Mike Shirley, Des Chandler almost catching the tire. Now we have the race leader again, Malcolm Mitchell. Mitchell in the closing stages of this race. Now Brian Beat putting out the signals to the drivers. But Finnegan with still a fair amount of work to do. He's got Nigel Wharton in front of him, though, a bank marker trying to get rid of Malcolm Nietzsche and come through to try and get some points himself and indeed Nietzsche going wide and walks through but he is indeed a lap down Brian Bean holding it out for Nietzsche Nietzsche first then in 322 second place 55 Bert Finnegan third place 203 Dan Clark that's the top three then in this Grand National round here at Brandon well, Nietzsche looking good for the win here but Finnegan's closing in all the time there's Clark Wayman's now fourth fifth Willie Harrison, sixth place Bobby Burns, seventh Dave Beresford. So plenty of top talent out there, but it's a yellow top who leads them with three laps to go. Malcolm Nietzsche. Well, Finnegan trying to find space to put the bumper in. Two laps to go now. Finnegan often criticised for not putting the bumper in enough. Does tend to rely on making the gaps for himself without necessarily using the bumper, waiting for the opportunity. But there again, those that remember the Drivers' Championship may remember one or two sharp raps on the back bumper of uh, Stuart Smith's car. Last lap now for Malcolm Nietzsche, but Finnegan in second. Well, can he catch the odds on now? Nietzsche just catches Johnson's rear wheel. And Nietzsche, with just about two-thirds of a lap to go, just catches the wheel of that car. Bad luck there for Nietzsche. The checkered flag comes out, and it's a win for Bert Finnegan in number 55. Finnegan first then, second Dan Clark, third went to but Frankie Wayman rather in 2-1-2. So another night of steady points gathering for the national points champion. Frankie tonight having to come through the constellation, got a second in that, got a fifth in the final, a third in the Grand National. That's consistency. But Bert Finnegan, the former points champion of 1983, comes through for the win in the Grand National. And Finnegan having had a third place in his heat, then a ninth place in the final comes through for a win at the last attempt in the Grand National Championship qualifying round. Second place to Dan Clark, third place to Frankie Wayman. With all the sympathy in the world, there's Malcolm Nietzsche and the heavy pressure from Bert Finnegan, it must be added. Just catching the wheel of Dave Johnson's car, going round on the final lap. Whether or not Finnegan would have had him, it's another matter. But there again with a red top right in the tail of Nietzsche, that bumper could have, could have come in at any time in that final lap. Maybe Finnegan's work was done for him. But Finnegan then, certainly a, a well-merited victor of the Grand National Championship round. All sympathies, all sy sympathies for Malcolm Nietzsche's side, of course. That's stock car racing. So Bert Finnegan wins the final race of the night here at Brandon, the Grand National Championship qualifying round. Now, you've got an interesting device in your hands there. We've heard about this. Could you tell us something about it, though, in detail? I believe it's a mud eater, isn't it? That's correct. It's, uh, it's an American invention. Um, it's like an electric visor, or in other words, uh, you can throw as much mud as you want at the, wi at the screen, at the shield, and uh, there's an electric motor in one end, and it winds a roll of cling film through um, as soon as you touch a button, and I have the button strapped to my knee, so all I have to do is just take one hand off the wheel and touch it, and it'll move the, mo it'll move the visor along about eight inches and clear all the screen. It's, much, um, what kind of cost is it? Well, they're very expensive. 250 pound. Uh, Warren Taylor from Hartlepool selling them. He's brought them into England from America. But in my in in, uh, in my way of thinking, it's money well spent if you can afford it. Obviously, uh, 250 pounds very cheap where your eyes are concerned. Yes, and of course it is a hazard in stock car racing, isn't it? We've already heard one one driver tonight say he took his goggles off when it just got filled in. That's never going to happen with this, is it? Well, I've been doing that for 20 years. I mean, um, you have a mesh visor, you have a visor at the front, you have goggles, you have a visor on your helmet, you have four sort of um, ways of stopping the muck getting through, but you take one off, then you take the other off, and when it's really wet, you have to take them all off and just drive looking through a little space in your hand, and, and your eyes take so much pain. I've spent many an hour in the hospital having uh, mud 
dug out of my eyes and he only needs a, a small stone to do you some serious injury so you're taking a risk I've been taking a risk for a lot of years and this thing is such a good invention typical American of course and um, I thought well 250 pound I could just scrape the cash up and buy one so it's more than just a gimmick that's it it's functional very functional yes now uh Talking about other things, you've been out of uh, racing for a little while on and off this year, haven't you? You've been having problems along the way. Yeah, I've, um, apart from one or two incidents with a car, which were nothing, um, really. Um, I was doing a bit of lifting and working at the, the garage, and it was on the stock car, actually. And uh, we're in a bit of a rush, and I never thought. I lifted a big box of nuts and bolts up, and I could feel the old back just go click. And that were it. I were off work for a full week. I were in bed. But um, I decided to miss about a fortnight's racing just to let the back heel up and it seems to be okay now still aches and gives a bit of pain but i mean like a wrestler you know a wrestler has a few aches and pains the stock car drivers are the same really stuart smith thanks very much well that brings to a close tonight's racing here at brandon we hope you've enjoyed this night of formula one action another night where the blue tops have shone although in, in the closing stages it was the star men that came through for the major points in the consolation final and grand national after the heats were all won by blue tops Good win for Bert Finnegan in the final race, but it was certainly Nigel Wharton's night, a fine piece of stock car driving. Until next week, it's a very good night from Brandon. We look forward to seeing you again next week for more stock car racing. Good night.